divergent thinkers around the world are always under attack precisely because we threaten the status quo. We, in the end, are the ones who might overthrow a popular belief and replace it with a new belief. Hi, this is Johannes speaking. I wanted to get into this topic of internet censorship or how the internet fell to censorship to really grasp why there is so much censorship on the internet, we just have to look at Reddit, reddit.com, uh, R-E-D-D-I-T, for those of you who've never heard of it. Uh, it's been around for a very long time, this website, and it's organized around these subreddits or subcategories that uh, can be, you can start one yourself. They are generally um, monitored by a team of moderators that joins these subreddits. So they join the group, so to speak, and they police the speech on their own uh, Reddit. So each subreddit has its own rules, what you are or are not allowed to post or discuss in a post. And the moderators and admins, they will take down posts or they have the power to block people and so on and so forth. Now, if we, if we take Reddit as the main case study for censorship, because censorship on Reddit is so extreme that I can hardly post my genuine thoughts on there without either being instantly banned, my post being instantly taken down by some kind of algorithm, and mind you, the algorithms here are different per subreddit, or it is so heavily downvoted, I get like minus 103 minutes or so. But why is it so? Why is the internet so extremely censored? Reddit tells us why. Uh, usually each, each Reddit group is centered around a certain theme or topic, but the sort of people who run the topic or the people who over time become the moderators and start working together, start talking to each other, they can also oust other moderators, of course. So it's possible in theory to take over uh, a Reddit page. I believe this actually happened to the old R. The Donald when Donald Trump was president or running for president. At some point, it was taken over by, an ex by a clique of extreme pro-Israeli moderators who started banning everybody who was critical of anything that Donald Trump said. If you care about the psychology behind censorship, it is that average people, average people, the ones we call normies, they embrace a certain belief that they then accept as a universal belief, meaning they, the average people become convinced that a certain opinion or a certain view of a certain matter is the only view of that matter. And that anybody else who deviates from this, who has a differing opinion, must therefore either be crazy or a fascist or, a, or a whatever, or a right winger, even when you're not. This, again, has something to do with people being so deeply afraid of uh, being invalidated. Uh, nothing, in, nothing seems to invalidate human beings more than to be told that the things you believe aren't so. And this is a bit strange that uh, on Reddit, most of these Reddit groups have a left-leaning or progressive belief system nowadays. I say that's strange because if it becomes so religious to them to perpetuate a single point of view on any matter, then um, why are you claiming still that it's the Christians who are so conservative that they never update their thinking. I mean, this is the main left-wing attack on right-wing religion and Christianity, right? They say that Christians and religious people in general, they are the dogmatic ones. They are allegedly the ones who never update their thinking, when even when confronted with evidence and so on and so forth. Whereas we see the exact same thing on the left side. Take, for example, uh, a subreddit about, say, autism or a subreddit about ADHD. There will be a sort of dominant principle there on those reddits where they say, this is what we believe autism is or how it is caused. This is what we believe ADHD is or what, what, what causes it or, and so on and so forth or what it does to you. And that is the only acceptable opinion on that platform. Then most people who successfully post on these reddits are, are the ones who, who stick within those limitations, the ones who basically go along with the grand narrative that is set by moderators and admins, 
who, who themselves are not experts on this matter at all. They are just random people, I assume. I don't think that the, uh, the Reddit moderators for ADHD or autism and so on and so forth are psychologists who are trained in anything or philosophers. No, nothing like that. Nothing like that. What you see is a, a very primitive power grab. It turns out that the normies, the normal people, when you give them the power to control something like a subreddit, meaning where you give them the, the power to control a narrative or a belief about a certain theme that they want to be so. Normal people are really truly the dark side of humankind. You give these people that tiny little bit of power and boom, they instantly, and I mean instantly, become tyrants, uh, absolutists, they become the monarchs of their field, even though they are not the experts and other opinions may be true or false, but you don't really know that, so you can't really censor other or deviating opinions. Um, you simply can't get through these, through to these, these established uh, truth bubbles, I call them truth bubbles, each Reddit may have uh, different sets of moderators and different admins. Um, and of course, there is the general algorithm at play that will censor certain things uh, even before they reach the Reddit moderators. But almost all of these groups have put in place measures to keep out divergent thinkers. That means divergent thinkers, those are the people who will look at a matter or a subject and they see more than one possible explanation. They, in fact, even try out, they think about these possible explanations to see, and they meaning they run with those, they run with alternative visions to see where that leads you and what it means. And then you can compare the outcomes of several uh, different pathways and weigh them and figure out, hey, here's something that the general public believes, but here's something else that seems to be more valuable in terms of uh, as an insight. This is impossible to do on Reddit. It is somewhat possible to do it on Twitter to have truly divergent beliefs about things, to figure things out, to want to know if something is or really isn't true. Um, you, can, you cannot really do it on Facebook that much. Your groups might be closed, especially if you attract if you garner a large enough following of people realizing that, hey, the mainstream story we've always been fed to believe isn't really what it is. It's, it is something different. And you sometimes do manage to convince normies to see things another way if you are able to, you know, basically if you are right. If you are right and you have good arguments, a lot of people will be convinced. And that is exactly the moment where you are shot down. Uh, on TikTok, right now today, I find TikTok almost the most open free speech platform out there. I manage to speak my mind almost all of the time on TikTok without losing videos. No videos are taken down. I mean, not so much. Um, I understand the limitations. You can't really insult people or something or bully or harass people. That will get your videos taken down. But most of the time, most of the time, I nowadays manage to get my thoughts out using the right phrasing and my videos will stay up. I cannot do that on Twitter. I cannot speak my mind on Reddit anywhere at all. I cannot do it on Facebook. I cannot do it on many other platforms. I even tried like things like Getter or Parlay or Gab. Uh, the, I, I'm not a fan of these alternative platforms because they don't have enough users, really. And I think this, all of this, inevitably leads to the death of the internet because now we also have nation states that are filtering the internet. Iran does, does it, or Russia does it, but you know the EU is also going to do it. The United States, of course, censors websites, or if not, have the FBI seize a website, have it taken down or something. So there's all these um, actors out there in the real world, the people who run states, the people who run governments, they obviously also want to um, make people believe that there's only one truth. You are uh, divergent thinkers around the world are always under attack precisely because we threaten the status quo. We, in the end, are the ones who might overthrow a popular belief and replace it with a new belief. 
But when this happens, it will come at a cost to someone, some powerful group out there. They will namely lose followers or they will be discredited or in other ways their ego is hurt or damaged or simply they're losing money. The censorship on the internet, therefore, I believe, is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse to the point where the whole internet will basically fall apart into, a, say, a, an American English internet, a Russian internet, a Chinese internet, and so on and so forth. Or even within these nations, you will have different sections of the internet that will become uh, impossible to access to others. And of course, there is the risk that they will eventually introduce an internet passport where you have a sort of credit score system. And if you don't have enough points, you're not allowed to access the internet at all. Uh, so that that would be a way to completely ban divergent thinkers such as myself from the internet. And I see that happening during my lifetime. <laughs>